I am sure you have seen it. It has become an instant meme that they are using the iPhone 15 Pro with some attachments to shoot the upcoming 28 years later. It is objectively hysterical. However, I do want to move past the meme and look at how we could use this for ourselves. What if we imagine our own little case study, our own 28 seconds later, right? it's our upstart fan film and yay me, I am the director of photography. What are the things that I'm going to do and study, create the best image I can out of the iPhone 15 Pro? So the first thing I need to do is study my new camera. What are the best settings? First thing I would do is open up the Apple native camera app. The second thing I would do is close out of the native camera app and never open it again because it does not give me manual controls. There are so many third-party apps, but I'm going to go with Blackmagic Camera app, especially with version 2.0. It is a mega app that is incredibly feature rich. I have no doubt I can shoot a fantastic zombie movie on the Blackmagic camera app. The next thing I'm going to look at is the quirks and flaws within Blackmagic camera app to make sure that everything I do has been clicked off in terms of this works, this works, this works. And when it comes to Blackmagic Camera App, the first thing I'm going to notice when you're shooting an epilogue, false color doesn't work. It works for Rex M09 and Rec 2020 and all the other formats. But for some reason, epilogue does not scale appropriately. As of September 23rd, 2024, this is still an error. So what I would develop is a way around this. Now there's a couple ways. If you're using an external monitor, you can set up false color to work appropriately. Or what I've done is created a few technical LUTs. Now what these LUTs do is replace the internally made false color. These LUTs are all based on ISOs, except for the middle gray and plus one middle gray. Once you install them into the app, you can apply them onto your footage to get a read of what your exposure is. Since currently Blackmagic camera apps, exposure tools are a little funky with Apple Log. Basically, when you expose with auto tools, like if you just tap the screen to set your exposure, the rules of your clip point is different than if you set it manually. So let's say you're setting your exposure and you tap to expose for the sky. Now you can see that out the window is clipped. That is also highlighted in the histogram here. But let's go ahead and lock the image. I'm changing no settings at all. I'm just simply locking it. Oh, did you notice that? Look at how much highlight information we just lost by going into manual. For some reason, Apple Log Highlight Clip Point runs wild in auto and can work off of its own internal rules. But the moment you move to a manually set exposure, you're locked into set clip points. That is one of the most important reasons why you got to test your apps and your cameras so that you know these weird quirks. Now that I know that, now I need to learn what my clipping point is because it's different per ISO. Thankfully, I've already done this in real life and I've created a little cheat sheet for you for free that you can download links in the description. And that cheat sheet is going to show you where your clip point is dependent on ISO. So it is a fantastic tool that I really encourage you to download, especially if you're trying to shoot manually with an iPhone. The next thing I need to look at is what's the biggest codec I can shoot in? That for us is Apple ProRes 422HQ. Boom, I'm doing Apple ProRes 422HQ in Apple Log. Now, the fact that I've chosen a log means that I need to know this log. I can't just go out and not understand the limitations of this new format. Middle gray is higher than what you would expect from most log profiles. 18% middle gray, it is where your middle exposure is. And it's a tool that cinematographers use to know where you are within your log profile. And it's something that changes per camera. Apple Log, middle gray point is 50% IRE, which is higher than any other mainstream log format. And I think it's causing some issues with people in real world scenarios where they are thinking they're exposing their skin tones perfectly, normal 50% middle gray, but in actuality, they're exposing a stop under. And that is, I think, causing issues where Apple Log looks darker than it should. Yes, you should overexpose Apple Log, just like any other log. <laughs> if you can give it more light, that's okay. Giving it a half a stop more, a full stop more of additional light is okay if not encouraged, especially if you're shooting in a crunchy, hard, 
zombie movie where you're going to want to make sure that your shadows have as much information as possible. You can crunch them out if you want in post, but you are working with a tiny sensor. And that tiny sensor cannot be starved for light. I don't understand where this came from that you should underexpose Apple Log, but it is Log. Overexpose it. And to do that, you have to know how many stops of information, how much latitude you can push before you start clipping your highlights. So let's talk about ISO and how we can use that to get the cleanest image possible so that we can degrade it in post if we want to. Now, let's be conservative with the iPhone because we don't want to push anything in our independent movie. So let's say there's 10 stops of latitude. What we have to look at is how those stops are distributed above and below middle gray. And that's one of the key things that ISO does is where does it distribute information? In ISO 100, you have three stops of information above middle gray, and you have seven stops of information below middle gray. I'm going to crank my ISO up to 1600 because at 1600, not only do I get an additional stop of latitude, of dynamic range, but also I have shifted so much information into my highlights, I now have over five stops of latitude above middle gray, and I still have five stops of dynamic range in my shadows. Between ISO 100 and ISO 1600, I think nine times out of the 10, I'm going to pick 1600 because it reduces the in-camera noise reduction. In-camera noise reduction, why it's important to try and avoid that is because it can cause macro blocking, it can cause gross errors. If that's baked in, we're screwed. And those are now part of the image. And honestly, if you look at how little noise there is, especially when you place your footage two stops over, bring it back down into properly exposed and post, you're dealing with no more noise than you would at ISO 100. And in fact, I did this test earlier with DaVinci Resolve's ultra noise reduction. All you do is click analyze and it will sample part of the frame and it will tell you how much it needs to be cleaned up. If you look here at ISO 100, barely any noise needs to be scrubbed from this image. But let's look at a well-exposed ETTR at 1600 ISO that we bring down in post. Well, I would put that result within the margin of error. I don't think you could at all describe that as different. You will get a slightly softer image, but I think that can also be recovered in post by doing just bare minimum sharpening and you will have a indistinguishable image. But now you have much more latitude in your highlights, especially when shooting outside. You need to make sure that you retain those highlights and you have a completely noise-free image, just like if you were shooting at ISO 100. Now that I've educated myself in the quirks of my camera and my log profile, now I can choose my lenses. So just like 28 years later, 28 seconds later, is going to shoot with B-Script adapter. What do I get? Well. You know, there's a huge variety. If this is a true budget film, let's go with the DZO Arlesses. Those have a nice, very clean aesthetic and we can muck up the image as we go forward. You know, this is a zombie movie, so let's do something with a little character. Let's go with the Iron Glass series. These are some famous lenses, the rehoused vintage lenses that Greg Frazier used a special set on Dune 2. So we know that they are funky, cool looking glass. 28 seconds later, it's going to shoot with iron glass lenses with a B-script adapter. Sick. Now that we've studied log, we have our lenses and we can do some tests, let's start building out a LUT for how we're going to shoot 28 seconds later. Now, this is still an independent movie, so let's keep things simple. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. This is a very quick example of what the workflow would be to create a simple 2383 LUT. So we know we're going to do the 2383 look that's from DaVinci Resolve. So we need to take a CST and convert our Apple Log into the correct color space. So we're going to take our Rec 2020 Apple Log and convert it into Rec 709 Cineon Film. Next, let's go into our pool of LUTs and grab this Rec 709 2383 D65. Now that is already a pretty cool look, but if we wanted to, we could do negative one in our HDR wheels, which acts as a linear drop. Now that these have already been mapped to Cineon Film Log and we can take it however extreme you want. You can do negative two, negative 
negative four or negative five, wherever you feel you need to set your exposure. Now, not only can we drop the exposure, but we could also play with this a little bit. This is a grungy zombie movie. Maybe we add a little green into the shadows and perhaps a little bit more warmth into the highlights. Yeah, something like that. Play around, take your time, explore. But when you're ready, come down to generate LUD and grab 33 point cube. Go in there and you can title it something like 28 seconds later, then hit save and you have a show LUD. Now, why is developing a look so important? Well, if you don't know what you're shooting to screen, then how can you accurately expose for it? And that is going to change how I light, and that is going to change how much negative fill I bring into the situation. That is going to change the entire pipeline. So now, when I come in the end of the long 28 days of shooting, and I come into my colorist, and I go, hey, here's what I want it to look like. They're gonna be like, well, you didn't light anything to look like that. How are we going to make this look the best based on what you've shot. It's incredibly important to have what's called a show LUT. And that show LUT will go on every camera for every setup. And you're going to work within that parameter. Now, of course, on shows of this scale, you have a DIT on set and they can manipulate the LUT as needed. But you know, you can't do CDLs in an iPhone. Maybe they do, they, they might have special access. That's what I would do. Look dev, creating a show LUT, and then doing further tests to see how that looks to see breaking points, to see if something weird happens if I shine a certain light on it. Let's say I use a pretty intense neon blue light. Does that blue light go out of gamut and cause grossness? Or does it play? Let's find out. Know everything before you step on set. 